Today we're going to be looking at three ways you can texture in Blender, and I'm going to be giving away one of these models for free so that you can try out some of these methods yourself. Now the three models I showed you before were all created from Fiverr based off sketches I provided, and that's the partner of this video, so I'll be talking a bit more about them later, but let's dive in and begin learning. Okay, to get started, I'm going to work on this little old crazy cat lady character. Now this model here was based off of this sketch here and created by this user over on Fiverr. Incredibly fast turnaround times, affordable rates, and great quality. So the problem with Blender's texture paint system is that with its default airbrushes and its setup, it feels a bit clunky and basic. So let's look at how we can create a custom brush, and then I'm gonna show you how we can use an add-on that comes included with Blender for free to make the painting system feel a bit more natural. But first up, let's talk about texture painting. So you've probably seen a million tutorials on texture painting. You can grab that object, we can come over here, we can select our paintbrush, and we can begin painting on our character, right? But you've probably noticed that the basic brushes are just this paint hard, airbrush, and fill. And it's kind of hard to imagine painting in all this detail. It would take forever. Well, we can speed that process up a bit by using textured brushes. So let's look at how we can add one of those. It's actually quite simple. So what I'm going to do is come up here, I'm going to grab the paint hard, then I'm going to duplicate that asset. And let's call this painterly. I'm gonna save that. And then we're going to come down here to the fall off and we're going to grab this one right here on the end. And that's just gonna make that flat. Now what we'll do is come back up here to the texture, grab a new texture here, and we'll call this paint brush. And we'll click here. Then we'll come over here to the texture tab. And you'll see that the paint brush is there. We'll click open. Now I'm gonna provide a free brush texture, but you can see it's just basically a simple grunge texture with a radial mask on it. So you can make your own if you want as well. Click open there. And then after that, you can apply it to either your texture or texture mask. I recommend putting it in the texture mask. So click texture mask, select your paintbrush there. And now when you begin painting, you'll see that you're getting this texture. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add a little highlight on this gross wart right here. I could just pick a slightly brighter color there and begin kind of clicking around there. And you can see how just by having that little bit of texture, it prevents it from just kind of looking like that smeared out, washed, cheap airbrush that comes in by default. And you can go on the internet to places like Pexels and just type in textures. So here I've typed in a brush texture. So you can grab these type of smeared textures and all you wanna do is just make them black and light and create that radial edge around there. You can use that in a software like GIMP and you can create a variety of textures. Okay, so that's how we can make a simple custom brush. But I wanna talk about this add-on called the UCU Paint add-on. It's included in Blender for free. You just need to enable it. And I actually think this makes painting in Blender much easier because it adds layer-based painting for EVs and cycles, very similar to Photoshop. You paint on layer one, you paint on layer two, and that's above layer one. Now you can do this with complex node setups in the shader tree. However, this does it all for you automatically. And then it offers a bunch of advanced features. For example, you can paint right into the normals. And if you didn't know, taking a texture brush like we did earlier and painting into the normals is actually a great way to achieve a painterly look. Let's take a moment to talk a bit more about our sponsor. So Blender 3D is a fantastic tool, but sometimes you need a little extra help. I spent five years on my short film in Blender and I often wondered if hiring a pro could have sped up the process. And that's where services like Fiverr come in. With Fiverr, you can easily find experts for tasks like modeling, rigging, texturing, and more, all at affordable prices. Plus, the robust review system makes it simple to manage feedback and keep your projects on track. I actually used this in my short film when I was doing some of the narration dialogue for some of the early edits. Now, texturing method number two is procedural texturing. If you've ever downloaded some of the production files from the official Blender team, you'll see that when they create these environments, they have crazy complex setups for these shader trees. So, what I want to do today is show you three common simple shader tricks I use. I also recommend you go check out one of my most popular tutorials on how to create clay and also how to create this painterly effect where I show entire workflows there. But let's dive in and look at how we can create more realistic fur. If you like the model I'm working on, it was actually made by this user over on Fiverr. I provided a sketch and they gave me a model within a few days. I was incredibly happy with the quality. They were receptive to feedback and they provided me the project files in case I wanted to make adjustments myself later. So let's start with fur first. Now, a lot of times people will take this hair BSDF node and they'll just toss it directly on their character. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's say that we have our character here with kind of a light blue fur. And this is okay. It, it looks like hair, but we could make this better. So if we actually grab a curve info node, we can pull this in and you can see that we can start getting random data here. 
So if I go ahead, drag out this random data, let's plug this into a color ramp, plug this here. I'm gonna switch this to constant, move this over. You can see that it can start to randomize the strands of hair of color. Well, the thing with hair is that hair is oftentimes two to three colors on average. And by just mixing in a few extra colors, we can make this look a lot more realistic. So I can add three stops there. And let's say that I pick this kind of light blue base color. If I press Control C over there, I can click these and copy it to all of them. Then can grab one each individually and just tweak their hue and saturation just ever so slightly. And there you go. Check out that. Look how much more lively and vibrant that is as compared to just this base singular color. You can see how much realism that adds. Now, there's also other options here. So you can do things based off of the length as well. And this is another interesting thing that you can do so that you can make the hair start a darker color and shift over to a lighter color, almost like when your hair gets sun bleached. Now, this next one, this emission trick is actually something I learned from Ducky. So if you check out on his channel, he has like a full tutorial on this, but you can actually just plug a layer weight into the emission strength. And what it'll do is take the camera fall off and create a natural fall off around that emission object. And it takes it from just being a flat color to something that looks more like a realistic fluorescent light. So when working on my short film, my character picks up this water bottle here. And I had some people asking, how did you create such realistic glass in that scene? So here you can see my shader setup. It's very simple. And I'm going to break this down for you. And I just unplug everything here. Look how kind of just bland that glass looks. So first, let's look at roughness. So here I have a couple textures. I have a hand smudge texture and a liquid stain texture. And what I've done is mix those into the screen node. And you can see that's giving me some fingerprints and also kind of some dried liquid stains. Now I have stains in my crafty asset pack, or you can buy them elsewhere or download them for free somewhere if you can find them. Now, the other thing I did is I wanted that to affect the transmission. So if I go back to the glass here, you can see that when the transmission is set to just one like this, it doesn't look very real because in general, glass has imperfections. So the way I mimic that is I actually just plugged my roughness texture into a color ramp and then plug that directly into my emission. And you can see here what it's doing is creating variations in the translucency and transmission of the glass, which is leading to a more realistic looking glass. I can also take that roughness and plug that in there. And you can see how the glass is now starting to become more realistic with the roughness and the transmission plugged in. Now, the last piece of this for realism is I took the same grunge maps. This one's called scratches. So it's just a scratchy looking texture. It's a normal map. And I've plugged that into the displacement of the glass to create a bit of bump. So if I come down here and plug all this back in, you can see how that's adding bumps and other things to glass. If I turn it up here, and this can really help sell the effect of realism by again, creating imperfections in that glass. I feel like most people just plug in an object, turn the transmission up and they're you know unsure of why it doesn't look realistic. Now, this is good. I was happy with this glass. This glass looks realistic, but now it's kind of dark and it's hard to see what's inside. So one thing I like to do in Blender is I will take a shadow ray here and a transparent ray here and mix it with my glass shader. So by mixing that into the shader here, what I end up doing is reducing the amount of shadows. So take a look at the image here. Now take a look at the image here. See how much darker this is? So by cutting out some of the lights there, I get a much brighter looking glass, which is an issue I've always had in cycles is that the glass seems to just kind of darken the scenes and eat all of the light. Now lastly, we're gonna be talking about smart materials with this little robot character here. Now this model here was based off of this sketch and made by this user. Yet again, fast turnaround times, great prices, and very receptive to feedback. Definitely recommend checking them out. We're gonna be talking about how we can use the computer to detect things like edges and add wear and tear naturally. Now, this is much easier in external software than it is Blender. However, on Blender, there are several community asset packs that have a bunch of great setups, but I'm going to show you a very simple setup you can use. So let's look at how we can do that. So first up, we wanna detect some of these metal edges here so that we can add some kind of natural wear and tear to the edges that would occur over time. So we're gonna use a bevel node for that. So if we grab a bevel node here, we'll leave that by default, and then we're going to add a geometry node, and then we're going to add a math node. We'll search for vector math here. We're going to switch this down to dot product, and we're gonna combine these two values here. Now, if we look at what we're seeing here, we can see that we're starting to get some edges there. I'm gonna use a color ramp here, 
and I'm gonna crush this down. And you can see that now we're starting to kind of get those edge highlights. So if I crush that down even more, you can see how that's starting to bend over. Now you can go ahead here and you can adjust this bubble to adjust the effect. So I'm gonna do 0 0.075 just to make it slightly stronger. Now, if I go and turn this material back on and we plug this into something like the roughness, you can see how we're starting to see that effect come through. I'm going to flip the colors here. And now you can see how we're starting to get some wear and tear there on the edges, but this could be better. So let's also add some to the areas around where the objects are touching each other. So for that, we can use an ambient inclusion. Because if I take this ambient inclusion here and plug it in, you can see how we're getting ambient inclusion where all the objects are kind of connecting with one another. Now we can grab a mix node here. So let's add a mix color node. Take a look at what we're looking at here. And we just want to add this on top of it. So we're going to add the ambient inclusion to the bottom, but we need to select the proper mixing mode. And if I set factor to one here and switch this from mix to multiply here, you'll see that now it is combining the ambient inclusion and our previous RAM. And now we're starting to get wear and tear there. So this is good. This, this is better than just by default, but it could definitely be better. So now what we're going to do is just add a grunge texture in. So I'm just going to drag a grunge texture in that I have on my computer. And if you're struggling to one, I have some in my free sample in my crafty asset pack on Blender Market. If we take a look at what this looks like, we can see that this is just going to give us some general grunge around. So if I go ahead and plug this into the roughness, we can see how that's starting to break things up. Again, we just want to mix these together. So we will just duplicate this here. What's over here? Plug this down here into the bottom. And now you can see we're starting to break that up. So if I'm to plug back the roughness texture here, you can see how now we're starting to get a little bit more of a realistic edge wear and tear. And then after that, what you can do is just plug in a general texture that goes across everything, not using that edge mask. And then when you put it all together, you get a result like this. Now, I also added some dirt into my base color as well to kind of help sell the effect. Now, in this video, I used Fiverr to model based off of my sketches. But if you're not great at character design, they have artists for that. Or if you're not great at rigging or animation, they have artists for that. And it's not just 3D artwork either. They have people for digital marketing, program and tech, music, writing, business, finance, and more. It's a great site that provides a lot of varied service, so I definitely recommend checking it out.